Next week, does anyone know Dale Palfrey? If you don't know her, you've read her. She's a prolific uh, journalist here. And she's going to be giving a talk on tales of an accidental expat. So on a balmy afternoon in March 1973, Dale Hoyt and her spunky 83-year-old grandmother stepped down from a second-class bus for a weekend visit to Lake Chapala. And now 50 years later, Dale is still here. She will share the story of why she ended up as an accidental expat, observations on how the lakeside area has changed over time, and anecdotes about people, historical events and experiences that have enriched her life. She will delve into her perspective on language hurdles, attitude adjustments, involvement in community activities that are crucial to overcoming the challenges of adapting to life as a foreign settler in this unparalleled spot on Mexico's map. So Dale Palfrey unexpectedly found a calling as a bilingual journalist within a few years of putting down roots here at Lake Chapala Shores. So in addition to contribute, contributing articles on Mexican history and culture to MexiConnect.com and various print publications, she has made her mark over a quarter of a century as Lakeside's veteran news correspondent for the Guadalajara Report. So next week, Dale Palfrey, Tales of an Accidental Expat. And now we have this week's presentation. It's confession time for the LCS. Now this presentation is by Alfredo, Diana, Domitsu and Sandra. Now everyone has a different point of view and that diversity of opinion is something that enriches us as a community. We invite you to hear the vision of Alfredo Perez. He is the um, Director of Education here at LCS. Diana Ayala, she's the development director. They've all disappeared, haven't they? Oh, there they are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Domitsu Medrano. Domitsu is here? She's on her way. Nicely. She's the communication coordinator. And Sandra Gutierrez, the Spanish teacher. And with that, uh, I would like to give a warm welcome to Alfredo. I think you're up first. Excellent. Life is not perfect, and I think it is one of the best things about life. Because if it were perfect, we wouldn't struggle, we wouldn't know the ups and downs, we, we would miss all the adventures that make us be what we are, that make us realize all the potential we have and what we can do with it, that make us realize who we want to be in this world and what we want to be in this world and what we want to do in from and for this world. Everybody, thank you for coming. Well, uh, you know that I am Alfredo. Um, friend and family call me Al, but Alfredo is okay, if it's easy. Okay, so first I wanna say that maybe after this I'm gonna be fired. <laughs> but I said in the beginning, if you don't take the risk, then you don't grow up. So this is my second home. I've been here for the last almost six years, and I can tell you that I am not the same Alfredo that started working here the first day six years ago than the Alfredo that I am now. I am even married. I never thought that would happen before. So it's another me. And well, I'm gonna say things that you might encounter or find familiar, and I wanna say things you might not like. But it is the way it is, right? So there we go. What is LCS to me? Well, it's, as I said, my second home. Second, it's a place where I have had the opportunity to meet so many brilliant minds that have the, the willingness to share with me and with others what they have in their heads, what they have learned along their lives, and even tell us what to do with that. And I like that. It's also a place that transforms lives. It transformed mine. I come from Guadalajara, 
and um, I was uh, doing my second business when I before coming to LCS, and I thought it would, this would be an opportunity for me to do something else that my mind would be uh, involved, and not only because I was having a small spa with with a former partner and a former um, sister-in-law. So anyway, so this your app. It took me six months probably to decide to apply. If it was if it wasn't by Diana, probably I wouldn't be here because she, she was the one insisting until I discovered what it was. And another thing is that here, if you like it here, it's because you forget about your personal interest and focus on the community interest. If you come here with a project and say, I want to make it because I want to feel good, then you're in the wrong place. But if you say, I want to make it because I know this will make good for others, then you are in the right place. Um, we receive a lot, you have no idea, probably you know, a lot of projects, a lot of ideas, but those ideas are useless if they don't come with a planning. Because the way I see people think, but that's my personal opinion, of course, everything I'm, on, I'm, I'm saying, is that people come here and they think LCS is a person, and LCS has superpowers, and will do a lot of stuff, and that's not the truth. We are all LCS. I see volunteers here, I see members here, probably even members of the community that are not necessarily members. We all do LCS, so if you come with a project, that's awesome. But also come with your hands. We only have two hands by person, and we have our plates full. And we want to do so much, but it's impossible. We are not Superman. So bring the volunteers, bring your action, bring your effort, bring your money, if necessary, or others' money, and we can do marvelous things. It's also a place where communities, communities can develop. It seems like we are focused only to the immigrant community, I'm sorry that I use the word immigrant, but I have used expat and I've been scolded. I have used gringo and I've been scolded. I have used, so I, I know that the legal right term is immigrants and it's not an insult, it's just a description. Just like gringo, for me it's not an insult, it's a description. Because I don't like using American, because I am American too, if it makes sense to you. You know. And um, so we focus in the communities. So I said before that it was transforming lives. It is transforming the life of those students who are taking or getting a scholarship from LCS. That's been happening for years. Hundreds of students have, have been through that program and they have finished school. Of course, their own efforts are the G's of everything, right? But without probably this help, they could not bring something to the community. They could not be what they are now. And we continue doing that. Also, it has transformed the lives of people who can now speak English because they have the chance not only to communicate with you guys, but also to be something different, to do something different with their lives. When I learned English, I was 15, and my dad said, I'm from a working class uh, family. So my dad said, if I'm going to pay it, it has to be English. And I was like, no, what am I going to use that for? I want French. I want to sound sexy and sensual, you know? So he was like, if, I, if it's me who's going to pay for it, English or nothing. So I said, nothing. I don't want it. Later, in high school, in preparatoria, I heard my, co my co classmates speaking English. And I was like, oh my god, I want to do that. So I went back to my dad and said, English is okay. So I started learning it. And to be honest, it has fed me for mostly my entire life. It's because of English that I have been in places I never knew I could be before. So I know that that transforms the lives. We have 500 people, average, every year learning English. 500 people from Joco, from Guadalajara, from across the lake, from the area, from Chapala and beyond. So it's not simple. It's, it's so much. Also, it's a place where newbies learn their way into the community. I don't consider a hick Mexico Mexico, to be honest. It's a mix, and it's a very lovely mix, and it's a very hateful mix sometimes. Why? Because everybody comes with their own richness of culture, with their own richness of thought, with their own richness in any sense you want to think of. And, and some of them keep it for themselves, fine, but some others open and share. And that's what makes this community be still alive. And I'm not talking only about LCS. 
Um, so newbies start their adventure. Then afterwards they grow up and they can fly by themselves. It's also a place where you can get a lot of valuable information if you know how to ask. Information is there, you just need to knock at the door. But please don't knock at the door like this. You know, right, what it means. It's an insult for those who don't know. So don't knock at the door like that, you're insulting the people in the house. Okay, um, so they get information, I'm oh, sorry. I'm a little nervous. But it's because of the language, you know? I don't, in my head I have a lot of ideas that I want to share, but I don't want them to get lost in translation. So anyway, it's also a way, a place where education is very important. You come here, for example, with all your background, but I don't know, probably you notice that you need to relearn. You need to forget things the way that you learn them, and you need to relearn. Otherwise, it's so frustrating that you've been there, I bet. And not only you, also us, also the ones that speak Spanish, go through that. So you are not alone. We share that feeling. Anyway, so in education, I believe in education. I believe that if everybody gets educated, not only at home, but also school, or somehow, society becomes better. And we are far away from that, at least in this community. Sorry, coffee. At least in this community. I'm not saying the rest of Mexico. It's different. Also, um, one, th the one thing that I hate is that I have become aware of how fragile life is because I have the chance to know someone and that, that someone is gone. And it's horrible. I've never thought I would face that at this age. So I'm learning a lot that I need to, to, to enjoy more, that I need to take care of myself better so I can continue with the rest of my life the best possible. It's also a place where I see people fighting, people trying to solve the problems, especially health problems, and that's awesome because I'm learning from that. It's a place where I would love everybody to be bilingual, to be honest. Because speaking in another language, it's hard. What do you know if you're trying? It's hard. Especially when you want to use certain words and they mean something different, like caliente and horny. They mean the same and you want to use it for food or when you're hot, you say, estoy caliente and you are telling us you're horny. So it, I know it's not easy. So I know it's not easy. So you can see, and also you can see, I'm going to end up my participation with, and also you can see that everybody has a, you don't know this, everybody has a different reality. We that work here have our own reality that we struggle with or that we enjoy every day. Volunteers, volunteers have their own reality. And I'm trying to understand it, but I will never get to the point of really understanding it because I'm not a volunteer, I work here. And a volunteer will never get the way I understand things as a, as a worker here. And then we have the reality of the members. And many of them come and want to do, as I said before, share and learn and do. But there are others who come and just want to be served. I'm sorry this is not a club, this is an association, a non-profit. So if you're here to get served, you're in the wrong place. Because your 800 pesos doesn't cover that. $40, $40 a year? You know what we can do with $40 a year? We can barely pay a little part of the expenses that we have every month. And you pay it once a year. Thank you for doing that, because it helps anyway a lot. And the last part I want to say here, because there are more particip participants here, is lately my opinion has changed into a negative way. And I, I, I want to say this the way I feel it. Because for the last six years, I said I've been knowing marvelous people. But I will also be knowing horrible people. <laughs> no, really. Horrible people that have yelled at me. People that have said bad things to my people. Or to me. And I know they don't mean bad all of the time. I had in a class a woman say, am I supposed to say good morning or buenos dias in the street? I wanted to answer, whatever, it's fine. You're in a heat, whatever you prefer, it works well. But before I could answer that, she turned the, her face to the, the woman next to her and said, 
because I think this should be appreciated that we are speaking English because they want to learn. And I was like, you know, like in my face, in my class, I understand that she didn't mean that. I thought she was thinking she was doing a good thing, and probably she is. But I don't know if these words right there hurt. Because when we go to, to America, to USA, we are uh, demanded to speak the language. We, here we are not demanding you to speak the language. It would be awesome if you do, because you will, won't miss the fun. You won't miss the information that the Mexicans have that you need to have that you are missing important information about cartels, about security, about comedy, about the law. And if you are not learning the language, at least to know those things, you are missing an important part of your life here. Really, I mean it. And um, so anyway, so yeah, lately I've been very emotional about it. And if you see me making a face, it's not against you, it's me trying to deal with some things I hear. Okay? And the last thing I want to say is, I love. <laughs> I know this is against what I just said, but I love to be in my own country speaking a different language and knowing all of you and more people. So, don't forget this is not a person. This is LCS. It's an association that you, that you are part of it. You could be a vein, you could be a leg, you could be an arm. You could be whatever you want to be. This is a chance for you to reinvent your life. Nobody knows you here if you're new. So reinvent it. You are welcome to do that. So thank you again, or thank you, for bringing yourself to this community and making it richer. Thank you. And I guess I'm going to pass the microphone to Sandra. myself starting. So I study uh, Hispanic letters, literature, and mostly Spanish. So now I'm doing that. I'm teaching Spanish here. And I want to start telling you that I wanted to do this, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be good at it. And at school, I thought that I was going to be to investigation because everyone in school was saying, this part is more investigation. And I was like, okay, it's, it sounds good, it sounds fun. Um, and actually, in school, I learned that I love Spanish. You, I, I grew up knowing Spanish. I know how it works, I know how to use it. But then you realize that you don't know what to use that. We're experts in using it, but we don't know why we use it. And then when I start learning why we use that, and we're not conscious of that, I fell in love with Spanish even more. So, now I think that's what I want to, to teach you here. To not just learn the language, but learn, learn how to love that language, even if it's not yours. But making it yours, yours is what makes you love that language. Um, I was able to participate two times in a program that we offer in a school that is precisely that, teaching Spanish to foreign people. Uh, we have people from USA, Canada, we, but we also have people from Brazil, from Turkey, and it was awesome. I was the assistant of the professor, so I was learning how the professor teaches Spanish, what she does, um, what techniques does she have. But then someone tells you you're gonna have to give a little like, workshop, and then I got scared because I have no idea what to teach them. They just tell us, okay, the, this workshop calls, um, 
or the name, uh, oral expression or a writing. But they don't give us anything. They didn't tell, they didn't say you have to do this. You just have it, you have three classes, do what you want with that. So what we did was just reading, just trying to talk. And I see them enjoy that. I enjoy that. And as I said, I participate in that two times. I really enjoy it. Right now in class, um, as I say, I'm new, so we still trying to figure out things. But what I want to do is not just tell you how you should write or what are the rules in Spanish. Because yes, we have to know that, but at the end of the day, if we don't know how to speak the language beyond the rules, it's not going to be the same. With each language, we have culture, not just speaking. So Mexican be really good in doing we call it mixing in Spanish, because the Spanish, it has, once again, the rules, how we write it. But then, for me, Mexicans, we are a whole other world in Spanish speaking. Because we have techniques, we have verbs that maybe mean something, and we use it for the opposite. And then, is when you realize that we're expert in the language without knowing that. We make it our own. Um, so, once again, uh, and I want to close with this, it's a small talk, um, but I want to invite you to, even if you're not in class, learning Spanish, and as Alfredo said, go outside a I've been here for a short time, I love it already, but try to go to Guadalajara, to another place where you know that you have to be forced to speak Spanish. Because in here you know that maybe if you go to the store, Maybe there's someone in there that can help you because speaks English. But if you go to another place where you have to force yourself to speak Spanish, then the brain is going to switch. <laughs> it's going to say, I need to learn this language, otherwise I'm not going to be able to communicate with anybody. And for me, that's great. So, and once you get to the Spanish to the level where you can understand our jokes, are double meanings. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to enjoy that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass the microphone to the Mitsu. Hola. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Well, good morning. I'm Domitsu. I, I have been here in LCS like uh, five years, more or less. So it has been a, a full experience, a very beautiful one. I have learned a lot. I have met a lot of, a lot of people really wonderful. And LCS has become a an important part of my life because many things has happened to me since I came here. Uh, as Alfredo says, I am a completely different person from when I was at the beginning. I was pretty shy and I'm still, but, but less. <laughs> and I don't know, uh, LCS has been very important for me. <laughs> I'm so well. Uh, guys, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I have my, my heart beating. Um, but well, um, I'm very grateful to LCS. It has been uh, very important to my life. Uh, this story with LCS starts with my sister. She, they are twins and they her for a friend or a friend, they, he, LCS has art classes and they are really good artists. So they came even if they have like 15 years and the top was 12, I think. <laughs> but they look like 12, so nobody cares. <laughs> and they start painting and they start having some money from their paints. And then uh, that, I don't know, I start a, a, a a dream on them 
about being artist, and then that uh, bring us. Uh, I don't know. One time I, I came here and, and paint with them. My dad, when he when he bring my sisters, he stays to the conversation class with Phil. So he's now uh, well. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I hope you don't get lost in my conversation, because I get it. <laughs> well, my dad, he started going to the conversations in English and Spanish, and now he's an a, a Uber a driver, and he has frequently clients in English, and he's able to communicate in English. He has a little bit of experience, but also come here and, and practicing and knowing more people has opened the doors for him, also my sisters. And then I, I knew the LCS was having a, a becas, like a, the student aid program. And my brother and I applied to that and we both received the, the help. My brother is an architect. He was working here with LCS like uh, for the building planning and all that a long time ago. And I, I was contacted by Alfredo, who was recommended by Diana again. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. <laughs> you bring us all here. <laughs> and, and he contacted me because I just finished my my school, and they were ne they was needing a graphic designer, so I was working like at less than a year, like a freelancer. It was a hard work. I was really bad dealing with that. <laughs> so when he contacted me, I came here. I practiced English like two days, <laughs> and I had my interview with Terry, and we both have a click, and I started working here, and since. That day, everything has been different. I mean, I I know that my English knows, is not perfect, but I'm not shy anymore about to speaking. I have found so many friends here, good friends, beautiful friends, like in the like in my university, uh, like friends for life. I found <laughs> so many people that is so interesting that is helping me and teaching me a lot, how many teachers in my life. I found here in LCS uh, the peace in these beautiful gardens in my office. I, oh, I want to cry. <laughs> in, my, uh, in my office, I have found like a, a space that is just mine. The, when I'm sad, I can cry there because it's so intimate and it's, it's, my, it's my space. I feel like this is my space. I feel this is my home. And I don't know, the, the last thing that LCS has done for me, besides helping me to grow in all the possible ways, is that I would like to share is that uh, two years ago, my mom uh, got cancer. She got breast cancer. And it was a tough time for all. And my brother was uh, paying her treatment, like the, the insurance he has, and she, he shared with her. But then with the COVID and the pandemic, they get fired. <laughs> so my mom was like, uh, now what, no? So I, I took the, the insurance, the LCS, give it to me and I, I share it with her and she's now receiving all the treatment, all the medicines and all the operations and all that by the insurance. And that's something that I, I don't know, I don't have to words to say to you. Thank you to <laughs> LCA. <laughs> and also um, all the things, you know, that when you have cancer, it's not enough to just have the the chemo, the chemos, and and all that, not the radiations and all that, because that's that's something really rough to your body. So you need vitamins, you need, you know, all the alternative 
And my mom, I was able, thank you again to LCS, I was gave, able to give that to her, like almost all my, my salary was going to her like every week. So that's something, and my mom is now fine. She has no cancer anymore, she's wow. just going. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> she's just going to the reviews like every, every time in a, in a month or two weeks. So I'm pretty grateful to LCS. I'm happy to be here and I feel proud of all the things that I have done that I have learned, all the magazine, the signs, the organization, receiving now uh, some school, uh, uh, students from other schools and me be able to say, you do this, do this, and you know, like, be the boss. <laughs> I never be that, and, and now I feel confident, and I feel that I can work like in any place that I wish. Thank you to LCS. So I just can say thank you. Thank you to LCS, to all the members, to all the staff that I, most of my dearest friends, my dearest teachers. <laughs> and well, that's all before I cry. <laughs> so I'm passing my to Diana. Thank you. I'm here every Sunday sharing with you well, the organization, but now being part of <laughs> on this side and being able to bring my co-workers so you can know what we are doing and that we are Mexican and how you affect our community and how you enrich our lives. Well, LCS enrich our lives, that's amazing. So I want to share with you a little about my life. I'm from Veracruz. Uh, that's the south of Mexico. It's not a nice place, but when I was a kid, I was living there, and I never, I, I never had an interest in something. I know some people are like, oh yeah, I want to be a veterinarian, or I want to be a doctor, I want to be something in life. <coughs> I didn't have that. I went to school in Mexico City. I studied economics, but. I didn't have my mission in life. I was just following the path. I, was, I knew I needed to grow, I needed to go and find a job, I needed to do something. But I couldn't find my passion in life. So then I moved to Lakeside in 2008. Uh, I'm skipping part of my life because I was married and then I divorced. But when I moved here, I was married. And when I first moved here in 2008, one of the first things I did was coming to LCS and volunteer because I knew for what I was reading that uh, you can do volunteer work here and in other places here there was a lot of non-profits so I said well I like to volunteer so that's when I found my passion helping people so in 2008 I became a member of LCS and I was doing volunteer work then I passed my divorce, so I missed some years doing volunteer and missed my membership. <laughs> so then, when I divorced, I had the opportunity to redefine my life. So now I said, now I know what my passion is. My passion is to help people. So I began looking for different jobs. I was teaching at the university. And that's when I met Alfredo. He was my boss at that time. <laughs> yeah, he was a coordinator. So I was teaching. And it was great because I had this student. So you know what happened when you share with the students? You get all that energy from them. So you can teach something, but you get a lot back. So I love it. So I was teaching. But then I said, no, I need to do something else. So I went to training in a company. So yeah, that wasn't that much fun. 
And so then I said, no, I need to be working for a non-profit. So then I joined a non-profit in Guadalajara that helped kids with a congenital heart disease. So I love it because I was able to change the life of kids with heart problems. So I'm very proud that 40 kids, 40 babies, kids, change their lives, save their lives because of the work I was doing. So that really changed my life. <clears throat> but the dumb part was that that work was in Guadalajara and I was living here. So you know, the commute was killing me. Yeah, but meanwhile, one day, oh, uh, so when I divorced, I become back to LCS doing volunteer work. I was also doing volunteer work at La Feria Maestro del Arte. And I, my friend Rachel McMillan called me one day and said, hey, we need a volunteer here for the student aid program. You want to join that program? And I said, yeah, I would like to. So uh, I was in charge of that program for many years. That's when I met the Tomitsu because I was handling her scholarship. So um, one day uh, they said, we need an education director. And Tori offered me the position. And I said, yeah, no, that doesn't sound like me. And he said, well, help me to find somebody. And I said, Alfredo, they need you. <laughs> and that's how Alfredo, I introduced Alfredo to LCS. And yeah, it's true, I was pushing him. <laughs> you need to be here, you need to be here until finally he came. Um, and so when they need a graphic designer, yeah, of course, I was thinking in Tomitsu and that's why she came. So as you can see, I was also working for LCS, like the nature program, <laughs> the human resources. <laughs> and oh, well, we had also Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa, she is in the administration. She was doing her social service here, and I said, why don't you join LCS? So she's also part of the staff. <laughs> well, so uh, in 2019, they opened the position of development director, and then Alfredo told me, hey, Diana, this is open, open position. So I applied, and they said, yeah, okay, so I got the job, yay. <laughs> So now I live in Riveras, so it's amazing. In Riveras, here is five minutes. So that was great. And um, during my uh, work here, I keep working with the students. I keep working, having the students do the social work. And I love that. And having like Montserrat or uh, Salomon, you remember we used to have some other students. That's part of what I do, and I love that. That's part of my legacy. <laughs> um, and when I was in charge of the student aid program, I asked the students to do um, volunteer work. I think in Mexico, we don't know what, about what volunteering brings to us. So I want to share that with the students, so my way was forcing them to do volunteer work. And now, sometimes they even say, I said, hey, you already, you already covered the hours. I said, no, I want to help. So that's amazing, because we're teaching them how to do give back. So if you have come to the events, usually I'm at the front, and I have students that are helping me, that are students and they're volunteers. Yeah. And so that way, also, I can bring the Mexican community to know about LCS. Some of the students that we have, they came one day to get the application, but they didn't know what else was here at LCS. And LCS is open to the whole community. The whole community, it's everybody who lives in the area, or even is just visiting, or just staying here. So for me, it's great to have the students that they can come and they can learn about what LCS can bring to their lives. And 
I like helping people, and I'm proud of myself when I do stuff like this that they that to change the life of somebody. Last Thursday, I don't know if you were here, but we had we we were able to donate, and it was not just LCS. This is a collaboration. This is something that LCS does with the community. So we bring the audiology clinic, the OIRBN clinic, and the company, Starkey, to donate hearing aids for Mexican people, poor Mexican people. So 15 people got their hearing aids. Wow. You know how amazing what's that? One of the uh, persons who, who go the hearing aids, uh, it's the dad from a friend. So I asked her, uh, what? You know your dad has the hearing aids. Uh, what he told you? And he said, Diana, last night when I came home, the first thing he said, don't yell at me. Now I can hear you. <laughs> Well, so um, that's part of what LCS is. And as Alfredo said, LCS is everybody. LCS is not one person. I don't know if you were here when Luis did his presentation and he mentioned that. Sometimes we refer to LCS, oh yeah, LCS should do this. Oh, LCS, LCS should do that. No, LCS is us. Each one of us is LCS. We create together an LCS. So please help us to have a beautiful LCS, something that we can be all proud of. You can bring your hours as volunteers, your knowledge, your money, because yeah, we need donations. <laughs> um, you can bring your smile, you can bring your energy, you can bring your presence, but please, Bring something nice. Yeah. <laughs> Who's on Facebook? Who has seen the ugly, nasty comments about LCS on Facebook? Yeah. We don't like that. Please don't do that. We want to create a good area, a good community. So let's do that together. Thank you. I fine. Well, we heard a lot of thanks from from uh, Demet, Sue, and Sandra. Al, can I call you Al? You can call me Al. And Diana. Um, but I want to extend our big thank you to you. I know, we've, I know you've only scratched the surface of what you do, and we really do appreciate it. And as uh, Al says, uh, you know, we are LCS. You know, the veins, the muscles, the bot, <laughs> in my case. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's all of us. And uh, would you like to uh, take some questions? Yeah? So if anyone has a question for anyone, Please raise your hand. We don't have a roving mic, I'm afraid. But if you can yell it or come down or... But do you have Could a... you explain the scholarship program, how that works? So the question is, can you explain the scholarship program and how that works? And thank you again. <laughs> okay, we have a um, unique account where people come and donate money there and uh, we use it for the students. We have an application online. If you go to our website, it, in the education tab, it says uh, student aid, you go there, and you can find the description completely in English as well as in Spanish. So what we ask students is, if you are from the area, from the eight municipalities around the lake, you can participate. And uh, we, we focus the scholarship for university level, but also we have a con um, agreement with CONALEP, which is technical high school level, and with also with ATTAC, which is also technical high school level. We have a few students from them. We ask, do you know the scale in 
grades in Mexico, it's from zero to 10, but you have to have six and above, so you pass. If you have five or less, you fail. So we require them to be regular, 8.5 per semester, or, or every four months, depending on the school, to be able to continue getting the, 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 um, the money. This is money for us, the money. Um, we ask them to work with us 30, 30 hours a year doing social service. It could be here, or it could be in the computer doing some stuff also there. We do, uh, once a year, a talk. We bring someone that can teach them with a workshop something that could be useful for their lives or for school. It happens in summer, um, and we take the picture, you know, and we get to know each other because sometimes they don't know them, each other, and I guess making contacts is important. And um, we have right now 29 students because some of them already graduated, and we are in the process of getting new ones to go back to 40 again. So that's how it works. Um, during COVID, the donations went down, so we couldn't get new students for a while. But um, if you know someone who is interested, please tell us that they can come to the office and make the donation, and we can continue helping the students. What's, what's the age range that you're serving in scholarship program? Oh, for university level, it could be from 19, 18, 19. Yeah. And we have had, for example, uh, women with kids that they were single or uh, and struggling. You know, you have to keep the, the, the kid alive and do your life, so that helps a little. And for example, this is not an, um, we call it in Spanish, beca, which means that we re require uh, receipts of whatever you do with the money. In this case, no, we don't require that because it could be used for, for commuting, for renting, because they go to other cities to study the university, or for food, or for books, or for the school fee, or whatever they need. That's what we do. And if they fail a semester with the grades, we, we make a plan with them on if, if, to see if we can help them go back to where they were or not. Also, some, some of them suspend for a little while, you know, they have to work or whatever, and then they come back and we continue. So there are many ways, and we plan in the future to change also, or to add a new form, which means, and by new form, I mean, like some people come and say, I want to sponsor someone. I know a student that is also blah, 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 so we don't have that here at LCS, but we are working to make the rules and the process and the policy so we can also help more people. And one thing that we ask the students is that if you have a scholarship with LCS or anybody else in, in Lakeside, then you cannot come with us, or we, you cannot go find another scholarship in Lakeside. You can go to Coca-Cola company, Telmex company, or any other company or even the school and get more, more scholarships. I had, when I worked at the university, I had a student who had five. He didn't pay a single peso. His grades were awesome. He was so focused on school, and he has a business now, and blah, blah, blah. Not from here, but, so we encourage that, but not from the area. Alfredo, um, as the director of our excellent education programs, what are you expecting to be adding? Um, what are some new topics that we can expect to see in the next six months or the next year? Did everyone hear the question? So he's asking Alfredo, as, as, uh, as the director of education, what new topics, what new things can we expect in the coming year? We made a um, survey a long time ago, probably at the beginning of COVID, trying to find what people need to know or to learn. And we discover with their answers that they, weren't, they need to learn what we were already teaching. So I was wondering, then why aren't you coming? If we are offering that. So I haven't found an answer for that. So we've been trying to add a few things. For example, we, have a, we are going to focus now on practical things, pra pragmatism. So for example, we have the CFE Make Your Online account. We're going to teach how to go into the CFE website on the 21st of this month, and you're going to make your, your online account so you can pay through that, or you can get your receipt, or you know, that's the first thing. And we plan to do more courses like that, so that can make, at least for the immigrant community, an easier way to, so, to face things, especially with the government. Don't think that you are the only ones struggling with them. We do too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We, but, but we are used to it. And um, so that is one thing. And the other is bringing 
little trips, like one or two nights away trips that, for example, if you go to Comala, you will have classes of writing, but also tours and stuff, so it's not only sitting and I know how to write my memoirs, but more than that. So we are focusing on that and planning on that. And if you have suggestions or recommendations, please, they are welcome. Thank you, Opri. Barbara? Well, I'm going to tell you what I know, because I am not a specialist on that part of accounting. We are an AC, a legal AC in Jalisco and in Mexico. Um, we, um, we are not allowed to give deductible receipts, uh, because we are not a donataria. Uh, we are not granted that status. We try it before, but then we discovered that we need to change a lot of the ways we do now to get that uh, donataria thing. And then the government changed as the new administration, kind of new administration, federal administration got in. Uh, the rules of becoming or being an AC and reporting became really hard. So many, actually many nonprofits disappear. But I guess Diana can tell you more. What Alfredo said, it applies to the Mexican um, government. So if you want a tax deductible from the US, we are on the Lakeside Charities. Yeah, so you donate it through them, and then you can get the tax deductible. So yeah, uh, the Lake Charity uh, Foundation is an amazing foundation, and then help a lot of nonprofits, and we are included on that. Yeah, so you go and go there. Have time for one last one, or uh, they given us all. One thing I do want to point out in this week's, uh, this month's edition of uh, Conexiones, we have a beautiful photo of uh, President Steve Balfour. You can cut that out and add to your scrapbook. I mean, it's, it is, uh, it's beautiful. But there's also in there all the other people who couldn't be in here, um, like Celia, Maria, all the people who work here, you know, Maria from the library. Celia is a cleaner, and uh, Amador, and yeah, yeah. So, so there's Maria, and uh, so, so get to know their faces and just say Buenos Dias when you when you're here. They're just wonderful people. Cecilia, is, Celia is my next door neighbour. Yeah, she's great. Um, just just get to know them. They're really wonderful people. Apparently, they only hire wonderful people here. Is that right? <laughs> Well, once again, once again, thank you very, very much for giving your presentation today and all you do throughout the year. I also want to mention the AGM. AGM.